Okay, so I'm just going to do another simple salvation video because every time I preach the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, gave us eternal life. Trust him. Believe he did it. He has redeemed us. He has reconciled us to God. We have peace with God. We're promised everlasting life. He is the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in him shall never die. Here I get, but you got to obey and you got to follow. These are discipleship issues, not salvation. All right. You want to argue? That's fine with me. I'm telling you what God says. Now, for people that think they're good enough, I'm going to show you you're not. A lot of people will be uh, surprised, but they'll think, well, I'm a good person. I'm not a murderer. Have you ever told a lie? Because if you have, then you got your part in the lake of fire. Let me tell you what it is. Because every single person needs to understand their need for Jesus. Okay? That's why he's the only way. He says, narrow is the way that leads to life. And few be there that find it. Because he is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And the reason is because through one man, Adam, all die. And through one man, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, all can be made righteous. We can be restored to immortality. But without him, you don't have it. You perish. You go to the lake of fire. The second death. It says it right here in Revelation. <sighs> the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, you do not have life without Christ. You're not reincarnated. You don't get to heaven. You don't have immortality. You suffer the second death. There is a resurrection, a bodily, physical one. Those that are born of God we do not suffer the second death. We go on absent from the body, present with the Lord. So the standards are way higher than people thought. The disciples even asked Jesus, well, then who can be saved? And he answered, he's showing these people, you're not as good as you think you are. With man, it's impossible. Do you understand? Impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And he made it possible. It was his plan. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All the old covenant animal sacrifices, they all pointed to him. It's all him. This is why we're not narrow-minded because we don't we think nobody else is good except us Christians. That's ridiculous. But he's the only way because he's the second Adam. He's the only one that paid the price. So all liars and by the way, when a person is saved, when they trust in Christ, they're not described by their sin. So we're not considered liars anymore. We're saints. Because God counts our faith as righteousness. Salvation is not of works. It tells us, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Now it tells us in Romans 8, for what the law could not do, that, yeah, moral law too, okay? What the law could not do because of the infirmity of our flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now I paraphrase some of it, it's just by memory. But there are tons of verses about nobody being good. Look at Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says that he concluded all. doesn't matter. Every nation, every person, all under sin. Psalm 51.5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh, if, you, if you go to Mark 7.21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. 
We used to be darkness, it says in Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. So once you're saved, you should present your bodies a living sacrifice. Isn't that just reasonable service for the one who died to save you? We believe in that, but we don't think it's saving us. Your obedience isn't saving you, people. Start believing the gospel. God counts our faith as righteousness. In Romans 4, 5, to him that worketh not. You're not working. You're not trying, striving. You're trusting, okay? To him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So people are counted as righteous because they take God at his word and believe that Jesus died, paid our sin debt, the wages of sin, it was death, he died. And the reason he was the acceptable sacrifice is because he's Emmanuel, God with us. God manifest in the flesh. He's the bread that came down from heaven. Even manna in the desert was a shadow of Jesus Christ being the bread of life. Okay? Now, if you look at Romans 5, let me, let me just nail this home, okay? Go to Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, that's a biblical hope. That's a sure hope. It's something we don't see and have right now. But it's ours. It's coming because God promised it and he can't lie. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, this is before we were saved. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. People come to him just like you are. I, I am so sick of apologizing why Jesus came to save sinners. People are so offended that he saved that person. He died for the ungodly. And you're not quite as good as you think you are. I can promise you that. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. God says there's none righteous, no, not one. But let's say a morally, you know, in man's standards, a righteous one. Some might die for a person like that, but he died for the worst of us. While we were yet sinners. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much no more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So we were his enemies, and he saved us. Wherefore, please hear me, those of you that keep throwing this, you gotta obey and you gotta follow, you gotta, okay, that's where, that's where you're missing it. Should and must. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What should you do? Walk in newness of life. Because we, we, we shouldn't live unto ourselves in our own selfish fleshly lusts. We should reckon ourselves dead, but alive unto Christ. My flesh died so I can live under righteousness. We all believe that. So stop with the stupid accusations on Christians all the time. You just love your sin. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You you can't hear us. Can't hear us. I'm, I can only preach to people that will believe the gospel. All right? For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. There it says, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Did you hear that? By one man. We joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that's Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, 
death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Jesus, the second Adam. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Do you see that now? One man brought death to all of us. One man brings life to all who trust him for it. And not as it was by the one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. So mock it as hyper if you want. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Whose obedience? One man's obedience. Are you that man? Then stop boasting about how much you obey. Jesus Christ is the one who has perfect obedience. And we are in him. And that, that's why we're justified. Not because of what we do, but because of what he already did. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The purpose of the law, of the law was so sin would be exceedingly more sinful. And we would see our need for a savior. Where sin, the offense might abound. See, so we could see just how sinful we are. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. What is that? Hyperparesio? Yeah, it's hyper. Go ahead and mock it. I don't know why you're hating on grace. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Every one of us believes and living unto righteousness once we're saved. But who does that perfectly? None of us. I believe the Lord when he says he gave us everlasting life. And if whosoever lives and believes in him will never die. I do believe it. I hope you do too. God bless you.